Thank you so much for having me. My name is Aspen Hopkins, and today I will be discussing Vigilant, sketchy NC2 annotations of chart construction errors. I'm going to start with a small activity. The chart you see on the screen before you was presented in a September 2015 congressional hearing. The chart purported to contrast Planned Parenthood abortion rates to their cancer and STI screenings. Does anything look strange to you? As a visualization savvy audience, you might first point out the lack of y-axis. You might even notice an odd scaling happening between the data points. Why is 327,000 the number of abortions in 2013 higher than 935,573? The number of cancer screenings also documented in 2013. In case it was missed, 327,000 is a smaller value than 935,000. You wouldn't be the first to notice these discrepancies. This was Vox's response to what turned out to be a truly very subtle dilaxis. It's quite different, isn't it? Incidences of poorly designed visualizations are common and are only increasing as the internet grows, as tools to make visualizations become more available, and as people attempt to make sense of complex events. We call these mistakes in visual encodings construction errors, when a choice is made in the design of the visualization that either misleads or causes confusion for readers. But actually catching these errors is difficult, requiring one, vigilance and attention, high level of data and design literacy, and awareness of evolving best practices. There are some tools that exist to improve visualization authorship, smart defaults in languages like Vega and Vega Lite, or constraints and recommendation systems such as Draco enforce data visualization best practices implicitly. But codified heuristics can fail when authors deviate from expected use cases, and their lack of explanation fails to teach the very best practices they inform. As an alternative, McNutt and Kendallman proposed a linter for visualizations in 2018. Like the equivalent spell check for word processors, linters parse code and surface errors within the code itself. The limited existing work for visualization linting has focused on systems buildings of a linter, relying on comparisons between sets of best practices and code. When disparities occur, errors might be highlighted, but their expression is prescriptive and largely based on code semantics. While building systems to catch errors is important, how we present these errors is also critical. As is well established in design and HCI communities, method of presentation determines one, the use of a tool, and two, comprehension of the topic of presentation. Charts are inherently visual, not textual, but the status quo for linters does not hit that mark. Lack of closeness of mapping between the error, one of chart construction, and the chart itself inhibits understanding of said error. Further, when errors our surface, their descriptions themselves often require car some level of expertise to understand. And these tools are neither focused on experts nor novices, but a middleman. What about readers? A related concern above and beyond analytical correctness is how to build skepticism and encourage critique of visualizations. Why have we focused our tools for catching errors in visualizations to authors when broad data literacy is so low? To focus on not just the errors present, but also how to surface them, we present Visualint, a design language that can be adopted for the ever-evolving sets of visualization best practices. I'd like to backtrack a little bit. Let's try the same exercise from the beginning with a different chart. What's wrong with this visualization? Imagine if you hadn't been primed to look for errors or that you had relatively little data literacy. Would you still be able to pick up on the existence of a construction error? Granted, a legend is a very obvious element of a chart, but you'd be surprised by how many people don't catch its absence. What about now? The absence of a legend is immediately clear. We call this method of surfacing visualization errors in situ Visualint, because lint is visually indicated. Before I go further into Visualint, let me walk you through our process in both developing its design and evaluating its efficacy as a method of improving visualization error comprehension. We initially collected and categorized visualization rules and errors from a wide variety of sources. We used a simple implementation of these rules to compare Vega and Vega light specs against. We then went through an iterative process for distinct motifs um, for presenting the error expression. Through our evaluative interviews, we developed four goals in design and created our final design. Finally, we conducted a two-part crowdsourced evaluation to explore how well Visualint presented these errors and also to just uncover preferences in users. 
Our four goals were as follows, salient but unobtrusive. Instances of error expression must be immediately apparent to readers, but they shouldn't interfere with reading the visualization. Direct, rather than listing errors in a secondary view, akin to many code linting tools. User feedback preferred aligning chart elements with error expression. Composable, unlike spell check, where there's only one reason the word may be underlined, it's spelled incorrectly, there may be a multitude of errors on a single visualization. Thus, our design must offer a composable visual vocabulary for displaying errors. Finally, uncertain. The claim design and inherent rhetorical force of visualizations lend them implicit authority, making it difficult for a layperson to catch errors when they occur. Our design should reflect the fact that best practices in data visualization continues to evolve. Less precise design elements may also help to subvert a visualization's rhetorical force. We found that of our designs, many either impeded reading of the chart, were not obvious enough, were not composable, or did not offer a clear enough reference for the error at hand. In comparison, our final design of Visualint was displayed in situ, either overlaying or replacing erroneous elements, and could be combined to show multiple errors at once. Its focus on sketchy rendering made it easier to question a chart's authoritative nature and to differentiate between the chart and the lint. We evaluated Visualint through a two-part crowdsource study consisting of one, a between-subject study measuring its effectiveness, and a ranking survey measuring preferences for error surfacing. In our prior identification phase, people were shown a chart and asked if it was well-constructed or poorly constructed. Upon selecting poorly constructed, we were asked for short or free response with explanations. For our between measure, we used six types of errors ranging in difficulty, with some being straightforward, i.e. a missing legend, and others more complex, such as the use of negative values with size encoding. We intentionally varied difficulty as it reflects what you readers might see in the wild, and we felt it would warrant greater diversity in response. Our primary quantitative measure in general across this two-sided uh, two study was correctness and chart identification errors of errors, which was assessed through dual encodings of these responses. We wanted to know how well people generally recognize errors in visualizations. With that in mind, a major contribution of our between subject study as a baseline measure of how well people recognize a broad set of errors on their own. After this initial phase, we introduced an intervention consisting of either a text response for the error below the chart with no visual, a visual indication, our visual lint, or a composite of both text and visual lint. We then repeated the same measures for the prior phase with new charts to show how effective these explanations for lint were at imparting best practices. Finally, we asked people how they felt about the error expression worked for each error shown. This was our ranking survey. In general, people are terrible at recognizing visualization errors, even when they feel very comfortable with data, even post-intervention. In the prior task, people on average reported 11.2% of errors correctly. Post-intervention, we saw a doubling of correctly reported errors. This varied by specific error, where a missing legend had just under 50% accuracy in reporting. But this is still 50% for a very obvious error. People with text plus text and visual errors had the greatest improvement, followed closely by visual and only. But we noticed a surprising and frequent pattern. Groups that were exposed to text only conditions often perfectly copied its wording when identifying construction errors. While text is informative, it does not indicate the location of the error. Less Experienced participants may read but not comprehend or be able to reapply information. This replication of structure may point to a lack of understanding of the holistic meaning of an error. For simple errors, participants preferred Visualint. Since the legend is missing, the visual is clear as to what the problem is and stands out more than the text. But for more complex errors, participants preferred Visualint plus text. The text gives context for the visual. The visual itself doesn't give a reason for why it's there. On the other hand, the text by itself is easy to miss. While different error methods of error expression may augment this awareness, both in the short term as seen through the ranking responses and in the long-term internalization of heuristics as shown in the post-condition identification task, it cannot replace the deeper engagement that comes from courses, books, and other more verbose materials. 
our results show that users need explanations for construction errors, but that this need evolves as they develop expertise and reemphasizes that people lack an intuition for visualizations. Visualint offers a natural, easily extensible solution to facilitate sanity checks for visualization authors and to generally teach visualization best practices to people. It's applicable for a variety of scenarios, from data journalism to integration with existing tools such as Vega Editor or Observable. We contribute Visualint, a technique for exposing chart construction errors in C2, and a baseline study for how well people catch chart construction errors generally. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or my collaborators or to read the paper.